Well, the wind has picked up, and I'm going to pitch this um, solo shelter here. And so I'm going to kind of pitch it with the back into the wind, and um, I'm going to probably string it to that tree. And then from there, I want to go ahead and use these other little trees right there to string it to. And I already went and found myself a branch, so I'm going to use this branch as, um, you know, the front doorway for the um, primary pole. There's a lot of deadfall around here, so maybe I'll use two, I don't know, you know, one front and one rear. We'll see. The thing that's really um, great about the paratarp is versatility. It's all about adaptability. If there's anything that I really learned when I was out on um, the divide, it's about adaptability. You set goals every day, but sometimes those things really don't pan out. So for instance, today our goal was to get to Shelter Cove. Shelter Cove is about another 10 miles away, and I think that's about 2,000 foot drop down to the ocean. Right now we're at about 1700 feet. It's late. It's 6:30. We rode about I don't know what it was, 20 some odd miles, 26 miles today, 4,000 feet worth of climbing. We decided to go ahead and pitch camp. The one thing that I'm a little bit concerned about is our water supply, but it'll be okay. You know, I've got three liters in my bag plus um, two full water bottles, which is another 50 ounces of water. Tony's got 75 ounces. It's probably enough to get through the night. Once we get out onto the main road in the morning, we should be able to find more water and just filter it. So anyways, at the moment, so first thing when I come into camp, my thing is, is I just go ahead and I change clothes. That's the first thing, stay warm. And um, now I'm gonna go ahead and pitch my shelter and then eat. Okay, so one of the things with Kaifaru, or with the paratarp anyways, is that they've got these pre-measured indicators on the side of the paratarp so you know where to break the stick, right? Okay, so you'll measure from here to there, and that's the first, that's the rear, rear pole, right? That's the shortest distance. And then you go to here. So from there, to there, that's the front door. That's the pole that you'd use for the front door. So I'm going to use this stick here. It's um, a little bit bent, it's curved. I'll take a straight section of it, and you know what? It's pretty darn good, see? And it just goes perfectly. So then the next trick is to actually break it in that spot, and look at that. Pure luck, right? It's a, pr it's a pretty rotten stick. Hopefully it'll be strong enough to actually hold up the tarp. <laughs> so, that's the front pole. Okay, well I've decided since it's so windy that I'm going to go ahead and use another stick. So, I just went over into the woods there and found a stick. It's easy, right? It's a stick. Come over here. And measure goes from, measure goes from that spot to here. Take it. Break it off. Big deal, right? And now we'll do this back section. So, so far, that's the way it looks. Being that it's so windy tonight, or at this moment anyways, you know, I decided to go ahead and use um, a stick for the back. And then I only carry four metal tent stakes. <laughs> And um, that's the bare minimum, right, to stake down the edges. It's really windy, and really I need more stakes. So what did I do? I used a stick, and maybe, maybe that one's not the best, but yeah, we'll see. I, I can replace it maybe with this one here, right? Um, sticks kind of don't go in the ground so easy, so what do you do? I use one of the metal tent stakes to start a hole and then push the stick back in that hole. So, right, use sticks. Okay, so that's the shelter tonight. It's um, pretty good. It's windy and it's just staying still. I've got it two time double tied off to this tree. Got it kind of staked down. Um, I used a bunch of sticks and spots there 
Now I could do more. I could possibly work on maybe this section here, but it's okay. It looks good. I don't think I don't think it's going to really blow away. <laughs> it would take something crazy to make it blow away. Plus it's tied off two sticks. It's kind of overkill to tell you the truth, but it's an awesome tarp, right? Um, you know, I love Kaifaru. Um, the solar shelter is awesome. This would be the vent for the stovepipe. Sometimes I just use it as a vent, period. But anyways, um, so what's it like inside a Kaifaru solar shelter? It's little. Um, it's exactly just what you need. I do mean exactly just what you need. It's pretty darn small. So I'll crawl in here. And um, I use this, this sailcloth material that my buddy Scott sewed up for me. This is my ground cart. And um, it's pretty awesome, really. It's super durable, it's super strong. Waterproof. Um, it can handle just about anything. Sail soft material. And this is basically how I sleep. I put my thermal rest on top, and that's really it. And the solar shelter. The solar shelter is just barely tall enough to sit up in, which is, I guess, great. You know, I sit here and I'll eat or I'll, I don't know, brush my teeth, whatever. You know, it's just nice to be able to stand up in, or to sit up in it. Um, sometimes I, depending on which way the, you know, which way the land is going, if it's sloping up or down, you know, I always put my head uphill. Tonight, it just happens to be that the wind is coming from behind us, which also happens to be uphill so I'll be laying down that way and then getting up like this so um, for those of you that are not familiar with sleeping in a little tiny space you know it'll basically be like this and when you get up you know your head just barely hits and you get up and then you're out the door